So sorry about that, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, we are talking today about um, the results of a literature review from a three-year research project funded by the Institute for Museum and Library Services. And what we found, what we were looking for in the literature review is what competencies make someone more likely to be a lifelong learner. Um, and since lifelong learning is relatable to every discipline and really every age level um, and teaching goal, um, we wanted to share today what those competencies are and have a conversation about how can we incorporate these competencies into the classroom, or I should say rather uh, opportunities to develop those competencies. Um, so yeah, here's our um, more official slideshow. Uh, the project is called Open Lifelong Learning. And overall, we are looking to create an instrument that measures lifelong learning competencies and specifically how open educational resources uh, can influence those competencies. So we will make those slides available in the chat. Um, I will send those through the chat or have Jamie send those through the chat so that you can see um, links to our Twitter and Moodle. They're on the middle slide, yes. Um, and the acknowledgement section for IMLS, um, who is our grant funder. So Jamie has built a jam board to facilitate our discussion. Um, so if Jamie can pull that up. Hello. Too many windows open. Sorry, guys. <laughs> there we are. That's what I want to share. After two years, we should be better at this. But <laughs> okay. So the the first um, slide here sort of uh, frames the activity that we want to do. Um, and, and basically, what we would we want you to do is um, consider the domain and then consider the competencies within that domain. Um, the competencies, of course, being like dispositions or abilities a student would have in, or a person would have in order to, to be able to develop um, in those ways. Um, and so I want you to think about what you, what you maybe already do in your classes. If it's open, sort of related, open ed, open pedagogy, open resource usage, um, that's even better, but it doesn't have to be. It really can be anything at all that you do when you teach your course to, um, to help foster these skills. And then I want you to either share those, um, or if you don't currently do anything, maybe try to brainstorm. Um, and so I want everybody to be okay with a little bit of silence because we can't think while, you know, while we're talking. Um, so probably what I'll do is set um, maybe like a two minute timer on my end to, to give you a little bit of quiet time. And then you can either chat or if you wanna be anonymous, you can use the sticky note feature um, just in case people are not familiar with Jamboards. Um, I'll, I'll point that out right now. So over on the left-hand side, um, oh, I have to share this with you first, duh, sorry. Let me share that link so that you can all interact with this document and you'll be able to interact with this and come back to it later if you want. Um, you know, one of the things with the grant is every part of the project we're trying to make open and we're trying to invite as many voices in as we can and then share out with as many people as we can. So that's kind of the, the purpose for this. So hopefully that link went out. Um, and so what I would want you to do is look at the competencies on the next board. And then over here on the left-hand side where the sticky note is, you can make it whatever color you want and then just type uh, type the idea that you have and then hit save and it'll land on the board and then you can move it if you need to. Um, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, so the first domain or, or area of competencies in lifelong learning has been identified um, as motiv motivated, pursues personal growth, takes initiative. The person would be strategically aware, like aware of their own growth and learning, self-evaluating, creative, 
perseveres and practices independence. In other words, seeking learning uh, beyond what is required um, of them for a job or a class. So you can see that these are either things that they do or adjectives that describe them. Um, and so, um, again, what I would want you to do is think about these for about two minutes, use the sticky note feature to add whatever ideas, activities, thoughts that you have about how these things could be fostered in your classroom. I'm gonna stop talking. I might ask if anybody has any questions. And since I'm screen sharing, I can't see everybody. So, uh, Brett, if I'm missing anyone or give me an audible. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and set my timer since there are no questions and let's see what we can come up with. Go. Sorry. Looks like we have someone that said, have students draft their own learning goals and periodically reflect on progress. That is a great way to build many of those skills that are listed. Yeah, particularly strategically aware, I feel like, and self-evaluating. I'd like to connect what we are doing in class to their professional careers and show them how the work we do is relevant beyond just our class. Um, Marla, something that you had shared with me was um, the uh, incorporating social justice oriented um, practices. And I, do you want me to go ahead and put that link in the? Yes, please. That would be great. That's to an article that discusses several ways to incorporate social justice oriented open education practices. Um, and a lot of those could help students pursue personal growth, take initiative and develop self evaluation skills. For some reason, that link is not working for me. There's my timer. All right, let's see what else we have. Build in reflection on assignments and discussions of how learning outcomes influence personal lives. Open low stakes activities that allow learners to fail safely and explore their own interests. Mm -hmm and encourage choices as possible and engage their curiosity. All right. Um, the open low stakes activities, and I don't want to call anybody out um, if they're not comfortable, but are you comfortable speaking to what you mean by open low stakes activities? Oh, that was me. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so my, the class I teach, um, I include a lot of activities that are low stakes in the sense of they're not worth, you know, a ton of points. It's not going to be detrimental if they, um, if they fail and they're designed in such an open way that allows them to achieve the objective of the activity in multiple ways. So it's not just that they write an essay or that they, um, you know, create a specific thing that I'm asking them to do. Um, I, I allow them a lot of choice in, in what they're delivering. So um, that's kind of what I, Okay, referring. so using open in a sort of choice. Kind yeah, of not necessarily, uh, yeah, open in the sense yeah. of OER. This but crazy English language that we use, it's like words mean different things. Okay, <laughs> that's yeah. Good. Although um, I do right. use OERs in my course, but yeah. <laughs> right, awesome. And, um, and again, what this project is doing is it's trying to sort of um, look at if there is a relationship between open practices and open resources and a, you know, increased growth in these areas. So, and, and again, it's an investigation. So we're not, we're not so sure. 
Um, we don't have all the answers yet, but um, you guys are helping us create them. So I'm gonna move to the next Jamboard and you all can feel free on your end to, to bounce back and forth between these if you like. Um, I'm gonna move on to the next domain, which is the learning to do. Um, accepting of ambiguity and uncertainty, learning to do, um, being able to work with different situations and people, critical thinking, informed decision-making, and adaptive problem solving using technology to solve problems. Um, so I, I'm hoping that you can um, think of some ways, you know, even with OER that, that you accomplish this in your class, but it, again, it doesn't have to be OER related. I'm gonna set the timer again. Probably a minute and a half this time, since we're at 1.13 already. Go ahead and go. Somebody just added, they like to use case studies in their sessions to give students ideas for how to apply what we're learning in real world, world settings and to show that solutions aren't always simple. There's my timer. Did we have any others or any others in progress on this one? open access databases with large data sets to help learners analyze data using Excel and spreadsheet software. Nice. I feel like one it's of really the, great. oh, go ahead, Marla. Oh, I was just gonna say that's really great because then they get exposure to those data sets exist and they can use those throughout their lives. It's not something that they only have access to while they're in college. Yes, that's actually what I was gonna say. Um, I feel like the, a big connection between OER and lifelong learning is that idea that you don't stop learning when you leave college. So, um, you know, why should you stop having access to the to the tools and the resources that you had while you were there? Um, and that, you know, of course, is one of the big benefits of OER. Um, I was going to add, oh, somebody did having students show and share their thought process while problem solving, and then have peers offer feedback. Okay, so working on problem solving as well as um, that idea of, of working with different people in different situations and thinking different perspectives um, can, can help uh, expand those skills. And then I was thinking also, I'll add this after, um, of using rubrics, because one of the things I, I recognize in my own son is um, until you have lived a little and you have developed some of these comp competencies, things are black and white. And so it, you know, you have these, these rules, you have these, um, uh, it's either this or that. And I feel like the uh, rubrics in grading um, and rubrics in self-evaluation can help students see that it's, it, a lot of things are a continuum um, and there's nuance and there's um, gray area. And I think that that could be useful in a class as well. I'm going to go ahead and bob over to um, the fourth or the third competency, which is learning to know. So practicing intellectual humility, engaging in learning opportunities or engaged in learning opportunities, aware of learning opportunities, applying knowledge and skills to practical situations, relates concepts to previously learned concepts, and then metacognitive learning strategies. So thinking about thinking. 
um, as you are learning it's metacognitive. Um, Jamie, I, I just want you to know I appreciate what these exercises I teach at the uh, College of Business and I get the, the students who come in and they they just like kind of have an attitude a little bit like, oh, well, this I, I know the solution. It's an easy solution. And like, here's what you do. And I'm like, well, actually, like, I don't want to be that guy, but uh, there's a lot more to this this issue than um, what your parents might have said or what you might think. Um, like, there's a lot of different sides to this thing that we really need to think about. It's not going to be a one size fits all solution. And um, it's 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 good to have those conversations. For sure. For sure. That um, to me, that says that practices intellectual humility thing. You don't yeah. know it all. <laughs> there's. Yeah. Yeah. And some, some of them definitely think they know it all. And to their credit, I thought like that when I was in college too, oh, sure. like, I thought I knew everything and sure. you don't know what you don't know yet. Exactly. <laughs> because exactly. You don't know enough. Yeah. I have to piggyback here just a second as well, Jamie, about your comment regarding the rubric, because, <clears throat> and again, I think about discussion forums that I do in my class. Some of the students can come in and have the right answer. Like they, they've answered the question factually correct, but they haven't carried on an actual discussion, which is a competency that really I'm looking to assess beyond the actual scope of the course content itself. Um, so I, I just completely 100% agree with you there that rubrics are a great way to communicate that. But sometimes I still struggle uh, getting that message across about why I'm doing that, why I care about this other component of it. Sure. Well, and transparent design can, you know, that's related to transparent design too. I feel like letting the students know your motives behind those things and the reason you're asking them to do those, um, that, that moves them forward and advances their knowledge, not necessarily in the subject area, but in these, these types of things, these types of understandings and um, awarenesses, if you will. All right. My old eyes can't read this one. Let's see, incorporate stop sign moments in my classes where students have to stop and self-reflect on previous work, peer feedback and instructor feedback and then produce artifacts. Love it. So that's that's doing a lot. That's relating concepts to things already learned um, and then uh, the intellectual humility and then being able to think about the, the strategy that you employed. Awesome. Any of my activities are designed to be applicable to learners' personal and professional life. I also incorporate multiple reflection prompts um, in an effort to solidify their thoughts and understand why they learned something. Allie Sharp has her hand up. I just went if that the last one that it was talking about the um, giving them the reflection prompts. I was just reading about how we've raised, you know, we've been teaching students so much about resiliency. And now we need to really start helping them learn to reflect because resilient people tend to not be that reflective because they don't stop and think like, why did this happen? They just keep moving. I so it. <laughs> it was say, I, this thing that I was reading was about how teenagers and call, you know, need to have those reflective moments. So it made me so excited to see that um, having the reflective prompts in there. So that's all I was going to say. So I was just excited to see that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I'm going to add that. I'm going to add reflection is important for growth. That isn't a strategy necessarily, but it's a, I think it's an important fact that we need to have here. All right. We are running out of time. So I'm going to move just because I want everybody to have exposure to, to all five of the domains. Um, the, the fifth or the fourth domain, um, learning to live together, um, self-managing, uh, has interpersonal, interpersonal skills, can learn in relationships and effectively communicates. So a lot of overlap, I feel like, um, between these two, but they um, they do exist in separate domains. So let's do a minute on this one. reflection with every domain it does seem to be a theme doesn't there reflecting on yourself 
just a, a few more seconds here. Discussions, point counterpoint discussions where you build in a natural outcome of opposing points of view. Nice. Loud. It sounds like a lot of you are already doing these things in your classroom, and that is wonderful. Uh, hopefully this can give you a, a framework to kind of sell it more <laughs> and promote more what you're already doing um, to administrators, wh whoever, and if you can frame it that you're doing it for lifelong learning, maybe that will be helpful for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I did want to say too, um, I didn't, because our, our beginning was um, wonky. Um, you know, I was looking at the mission statement of TCC and it doesn't use the phrase lifelong learning, but the, the um, institutional outcomes are, are all of these things. Um, uh, communication, um, hang on a second, let me, oh, of course I closed that window. Nope, here it is. Uh, communication skills, personal responsibility, critical thinking, and social responsibility. Um, and so I feel like, you know, addressing these lifelong learning competencies really is built into the, uh, to the cake here <laughs> that is higher ed. Um, and so all of this really does connect. The, the very last one, because we have one minute, <laughs> um, are technical skills. And so digital and information literate, multiliterate, participates in scholarly activities, information problem solving, and using tools interactively, blending language, knowledge, and tech um, to, to accomplish something or get something done. So we only have one minute. Let's challenge ourselves to maybe think of one idea for that. So I was thinking more um, um, directly uh, as far as open ed and um, just you know letting students know that there are journals out there that that are are open access and talk you know talk a little bit about why they are open access. It gets to social justice. It gets to um, um, you know the fact that that it's not always you get what you pay for kind of thing. But then you can also build in you could build in a lesson on. Um, uh, reliability and credibility, um, regardless of, you know, cost of, of the material. Any last minute additions? Uh, we'll leave this Jamboard open, um, and so you can come back to it. We'll include the link in the uh, whatever um, after session materials are available, and so you can keep coming back to this to add ideas or, or get ideas, um, and I imagine that Marla will figure out a way to work this into our, um, our one of our deliverables. As we move forward. Yes, so, I think so. Um, the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link to the website for the project so that people can continue to check in. And then that's all I've got. Thanks for participating. <laughs>